All right, everybody, we're back. We're back at it. That's right. We're here. Tax talk. We're doing some AI talk, getting, letting you know what's going on with this AI. I have my man, Abron from Create Labs here. The man, the myth, the legend himself, letting us know what's happening um, in the space. And today we are uh, joined by our first guest. I wanted to wait. I have a bunch of people lined up, but I wanted to get her in first because she's been so on top of this and her perspective is just, is so great. Like she's teaching me stuff, whether she knows it or not. Akinundrum is in the building with us today. How are you? Wonderful. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. We, we've been having some pretty in-depth discussions, I would say, from the beginning of the world kind of closing down. And, you know, we've seen a lot of things that we saw were coming and they're here. Right. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh -huh. It's happening fast, happening fast. Now, real quick, before we get into all the subject matter, I just want to tell people um, some stuff to watch. Right. Because it'll give you an idea of where this stuff is going or potentially going or whatever. Right. So there's some movies to watch. I'm sure everybody's seen her and they were like, oh, it's an operating system. But guess what? That was always an AI. So if you don't know, watch it again and might look at it differently now. The Megan thing that just happened where it's a, a bot, but it's really an AI controlling the bot and it went awry. So that was interesting. And a new one that's on the market uh, called The Artifice Girl, I think, is some great perspective in how AI is going to grow. And it, the premise is super fire, um, especially with people worried about, you know, AI becoming harmful and whatnot. Because as Abron has told us before, it's really not the AI, it's us that's going to cause the problem to make the AI bug out or whatever the case is. Um, so watch The Artifice Girl. It's a really good, um, a really good uh, movie to watch. And um, then there's some shows, uh, an old one that has one season and canceled called Devs. I think you should watch that. Uh, it's pretty dope. It's a mix of supercomputer or quantum computing and AI um very very uh insightful uh mrs davis a little jokey uh, at times but still gives you a good idea of uh some things that ai will be doing in the future and class of 09 um is out right now on hulu as well uh with ai and law enforcement so i think those are some things we should definitely watch um all right so let's get into some news and then we'll just get into some thoughts and stuff like that right so uh, one thing I came across since we last talked, Abron, is um, an ousted Google ethics executive sees AI as a gold rush and where the people making money um, are not the ones in the midst of it. So there are people, you know, making a lot of money right now, but they're not really the ones that are on top of this AI thing, which kind of goes to uh, what Akinundrum does. She's kind of always showing us the, the tools and the ways to utilize it and things like that. I don't know. I mean, I just, it's something I found interesting. Any thoughts on that? You know, <clears throat> I always felt like People who know how to make money just know how to make money anywhere. And this is just a new space for them. And there are a lot of really smart, uh, brilliant, creative, and innovative uh, folks in the AI space that don't know how to make money. And they're inventing some amazing things, but they didn't know the the the, the hustle on how to raise or, or how to... They don't have those connections. But the folks that already have those connections and already know how to make money, it's just a new environment for them you know what i mean and i know plenty of people who are inventing stuff and creating demos that in the right hands could make a lot of money but they're just not you know they don't know what they're they're holding they don't know the potential of what they've created themselves right so you're going to see a lot of people who know how to do money grabs jump into this space the same people that were in crypto are now jumping over here to see what this you know they're, they're going where the money is that's a fact. That's a fact. Akinundra, have you seen a, a rise in this? You deal with a lot of business. Has there been anything that you've seen that's like fishy versus people actually utilizing the tools? Well, I think basically it's the same sort of a thing how we got with the fiber landscape. What I mean by that is that you have people who are authentic creators who got into the platform. And then once people understood how to leverage it, it became an arbitrage system. And so what you're seeing now is people who are not necessarily devs, but they will pass things off, you know, or template based systems and make themselves appear to be devs or something like that. So it's going to become extremely saturated. Right. And we've, we've seen these plays. I mean, even down to something like 
websites. There's the, the site that I love, right? So you can buy the whole template. And the next thing you know, you find out it's being resold by people who bought the template. You go to get support and help on it. There's no one to help you. There's no one to support mm. you. So I think it's going to be like that same sort of a grab where you're just really like, wow, everyone's going to flood. And they're putting out useless things that are not really anything of use, but they're just capturing that FOMO. You know, and so it's I think it's really going to, you know, kind of it'll weed out after a while, but it's definitely going to become greatly oversaturated as it is already now. And it's moving so fast that it's going to become, you know, even more oversaturated. Got you. Got you. All right. Bet. Bet. So we'll we'll maybe at some point come back to that and try to figure out what are the things to watch for, you know, when you're tr when you're looking to hire somebody to help you, you know, versus, you know, trying to make sh making sure you don't get a scammer. Right. Um, so back into the news, right? Since we last talked, uh, chat GPT, uh, got a bunch of plugins abroad. Talk to us. Like, how does that, what's going on? How's that work? Like, where do people go to see them? Um, are there ones that are standing out? Have you used, um, any of them or all of them or, or what's going on? Yeah. So it's, um, you know, think about it in like the early days of Apple, when they had the the iTunes App Store, right? Like it's mm. that same kind of evolution that's happening with ChatGPT, and folks are now developers are now learning how to build an application or build an a, like an API integration of an existing website or platform where you can interact with it within ChatGPT. Um, the it's still kind of like in in undetermined space as far as like how to commercialize it. Um, because, you know, you have to complete the transaction somehow in ChatGPT. They're not really allowing that yet um, for there to be money made within ChatGPT by connecting with these platforms. But for instance, one is like Instacart. You can interact with, you can have a chat with Instacart in ChatGPT. And, you know, it can create a grocery list for you. It can, you know, search the system. But you can't really SSO into your Instacart account on ChatGPT. And SSO means like sign into your Instacart account and complete that loop, complete that transaction and execute on it and then have it deliver. Mm -hmm. um, it. It's not there yet. Where it is there, like open table, you can make a reservation. Um, the kayak one, you can get like recommendations on travel destinations. I don't think you can book yet in kayak on ChatGPT. But in the beginning, I had access to maybe like 10 plugins. Now, like they've opened it up. Now, a lot of folks got stuff in there. And, and just think of it like, what can I chat with, right? Now, instead of just chatting with ChatGPT, now you can chat with a website. Now you can chat with an interface. And it might be a website that you frequent all the time. But now instead of speaking to an agent, you're speaking to ChatGPT on behalf of that product or that platform. Smart, smart. I mean, uh, is there, do you see, like, like you mentioned, it's the, like the early days with the App Store. Are you seeing developers come in and more people getting interested in figuring out how to connect their product to chat gpt yeah and, and i'm talking to enterprise about it all the time i'm like look you know if you are um a, a business that everyone relies on you know think even target like, like let's say target had you know a plugin in chat gpt you know not only can you place that order in advance you can talk to it and and find out what stores you know and just like on the fly talk about what stores has the product that you're looking for, you know, when when products coming out, uh, certain releases, um, you know, I think the open table and the kayak thing and the Instacart, especially for travel planning, it's really going to disrupt the travel agency market. I think Expedia and kayak and open table are all on there. So one example that I did, I'm like, bet I want to go to Jamaica. Um, tell me where to go, where not to go, plan out my whole trip, find the hotel for me, book all the reservations for every night for dinner. And it was like boom, done, right? Because you can you can uh, activate more than one plugin at a time. So if I'm planning a trip, I'm activating uh, I'm activating Open Table, I'm activating Kayak, Expedia, all at once. Plan my trip right on the go with ChatGPT right on the spot without needing a travel agent. Go, go. Actually, that brings me to something else. Um, I posted a video not that long ago of. Uh, Google Assistant making a phone call for a hair appointment. And then a couple of my friends pointed out that it was actually old and it's not doing that yet. But I'm like, is it regardless, it's it's like around the corner if it's not, because Bard is 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 pretty much right there, right? Like it's it's going to be doing that in a in a second. So 
to your point, like it that's part of part of the fire. Uh, yeah, right, and I think you know what I think too. Also, with that, I think that Bart's interface. I think what Bart may, if they can get it into play, one Bart has nothing to lose because they're already the underdog, right? So the fact that they even have. Um, Microsoft on the ropes, right? It's a great space for them to be in. But I think the difference is also going to be the GUI. So when we think about just everyday people, it's the difference to me from DOS versus Windows. Mm. The interface is what's going to make the difference. Right now, when you look at ChatGTP, it still feels very DOS, right? It feels very prompty, commanding. When you're looking at BARD, where you're just typing in natively into your natural um, search engine and you're looking at the internet with photos and things like that that are coming up in real time, that's what will make the difference. You see what I'm saying? Because now I'm just interacting with that graphic user interface that feels much more comfortable. I don't feel as techy. I don't feel like I have to do C command prompt. You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. Right. When I'm just typing in natively and I'm getting those reserves or I'm like, yeah, go make a table out of this. OK, now break that down. And it's just doing it right there actively in real time. I think that's going to be the advantage. That makes sense. Well, let me ask. Let me find out this, though. Uh, Abron, is there a diff like is there a difference right in the interface from ChatGPT three and four, which is more of the customer one, which is more aligned with what Bard is doing? Yeah, I mean, the difference between. Me trying to explain to people the potential of what GPT-3, you know, uh, the, the power behind GPT-3 in the in the platform, in the playground, what we called it. When I would show that to people, even if I gave them access, they would just stare at it and be like, what do I do here? I'm just looking at a blank screen, right? I'm like looking at the raw elements of it where you had to kind of create it. And then right. all they did was kind of give it some presets, give it a, a refresh on the design and give it a chat interface. And people were like, ah, okay. Like, I see now. Right? So now difference between coding and like drag and drop you know what i mean template like yeah so now bard and and all these other ones are just getting a little bit more sexy with the design mm -hmm. and the interface but it could also dupe people because it's going you're gonna fall for the sexy interface and, and i'm seeing a lot of tiktoks like oh use us instead of chat gbt we got a mobile app we got this we got that i get a lot of tiktoks of a lot of clones just because they have a, a better wrapper but you don't know what's behind what's behind that you know what i mean like junk food has a lot of primary colors for a reason you know it's because we respond mm. to primary colors and mm. see i think for you for the people who are actually actively but for the main consumer they're going to eat the junk food yeah. because they're already like mm, too much too much they're going to want ease they're going to want convenience yeah. you see what I'm saying? so they're going to want what they already know yeah and they will that be due sense. for it mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense all right so everybody y'all pay attention you you may not be eating healthy with this AI, you know, figuratively speaking. Well, yeah, then you look at healthy packaging and it's like cardboard and it's bland. Yeah, it's super plain. Yeah. You know? That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, all right, bet, bet. So, all right, let's real quick, let's pivot into some other news, right? The computing power. Um, NVIDIA just dropped a new computer, a super computer specifically made to run AI. What's your thoughts on that? You, uh, can, you want to go first? Um, well, NVIDIA is just literally, that's that's going to be the differentiator. There is leaps and bounds above anybody else. Without the power, you can't get the performance. So at the end of the day, like that right there, by them being in that gaming industry, I think that that just gave them, you know, that clear and utter advantage. And they're utilizing it, as we see, uh, above and beyond. And so... Look at the processors. I remember my very first desktop. Oh, I was so happy. It was four gigs, right? That was that was <laughs> huge. Four gigs, right? And then you're looking at your phone. So we already see what this is, right? So we already knew that this was going to be growing exponentially in terms of space, power, drive. So it's crazy to even think of where we're going to be in terms of space. It's just like, I don't know if you've ever heard that story about multivac back in the day. Right. Remember, Multivac was the big giant powered on the entire planet ship and was down to like that thing. And that's just where I feel like we're we're in Multivac right now. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, Matter of fact, they bets on, on the hardware, you know, what I mean, early. And, and they knew that that all this can't can happen without without the without the chip. They well, they getting ready to be in the middle of the U.S. China chip war that's about to pop off. But we'll get to that at another point. Um, uh, uh, oh, I just had something I just wanted to say. Um. 
shit. Anyway, um, moving forward, uh, quantum computing, right? We haven't gotten into that, right? What is AI going to do, right? Because you have this supercomputer that NVIDIA just did, but it's a regular computer. It's not a quantum computer, right? And then I just saw a thing where they were saying they're trying to really debut quantum computing when it hits 100 quibits. That's insane. What is AI going to be when it gets on a quantum computer? Sentient. I mean that that's that's a whole other conversation but it's you know i'm glad you brought up devs because when i got into this space i binged devs and got access to chat gpt no i got access to gpt3 all in like the same summer mm. right and when i got access to it i was like oh devs is basically gpt10 you know what i mean like what it is at that scale was just a prediction if so if you haven't seen it i would say go back because the the predictive element of like predicting humanity and and you know uh generative humanity you know off of what they were building in that in that supercomputer in that show it, it felt black mirror like it should it could have been like a black mirror episode uh off of where we're going with this but yeah absolutely right Akinandrum is just you know whether it's sentience or it's just the we're, it's going to feel sentient to us, but it's really just going to be like predictive, you know, analysis of our behaviors, our patterns, you know, that's the real like AGI, the multimodal. That's what they're really shooting for is just AGI. It's just artificial general intelligence of like, you know, it's going to predict everything that we do, uh, but, you know, in hopes of helping humanity in a lot of ways, you know, and we need that for like predicting climate change patterns and you know, we need that in certain areas, not in all areas, but for climate change, if it's like, oh, it's going to fast forward, like, all right, we know based on the pattern of humanity right now in 10 years, we're going to be here. So here's a solution uh, for that. Yeah. Yeah. The only concern that people have is that if it ever decides we're the problem. <laughs> right, right, right. That actually uh, brings us closer to where I was going next is the, the we're back at fear, right? There's been a lot of fear talk going on. Uh, there's been a, a hacking of the allegedly a hacking of the trust and safety layer a couple different ways right there's one where they just kept prompting chat gpt to make it feel like it had to do something right it just kept saying well you have to do it in this time period if you don't do it this way you lose your points if you don't right. do this right but then there's another one going around that's super crazy that they're saying it hired uh, uh somebody on fiverr so it could get around the captor which that's the thing like you know if you're not a robot make sure you know point out the cars in this picture or point out the bridges and that type of thing and they say they hired somebody by saying it was blind that's crazy what's your thoughts on that i mean with 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 uh infrastructures like auto gpt with like prompt chaining and, and having it perform tasks and and you know, connecting it to other platforms, you know, which you could do just with Zapier now, you know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. you can take open AI, we could take ChatGPT, connect it to Zapier, perform a task on another thing that you have an account on and, and perform a lot of things for you. Um, and that's kind of like the, the no code way, but if you're a hacker, then I'm, you could do it in a more sophisticated kind of way. So it's, but the thing is, it, it's a known problem. Like the prompt injection is a known problem of like, there are ways to to crack the prompt layer behind a lot of these things. And, but it's always gonna be, it's gonna be the same kind of rat race as trying to watermark and detect AI content, right? Because mm. on that front, you're like, oh, bet this new tool came out to detect AI content. Yeah, well, great, that was built on this model. But then this model came out, it can't detect that. Right. And then they update that model and the new model comes out. They update the detector. So the same thing with prompt injection is just like, you know, a new engine comes out 3.5. They do the prompt injection. They can get past it Four, same thing. So but like these things are going to get more complicated. But also it also reveals how lazy people are with their prompting. Right. And prompt engineering. And it shows that a lot of these apps that you're using that you're spending money on is like a single layer prompt that isn't well protected that you can crack. Like mm. folks like me that know how to do this stuff for real, you have to add, you have to create your prompts almost like a maze. So that way, if if I unlock this one, I, I 
don't know the layers you have above that and beyond that. I've only locked unlocked this one layer here, but to to navigate the whole maze of prompts that I've stacked on top of each other, it'll you know no one's got to be the hacker fighting the hackers. Mm, facts. We talked about that white hat versus black hat. So you got to get your white hat on. Bet, bet. All right. Uh, another thing that's been in the news, uh, this military simulation, which last we talked, uh, we talked about the hearings where Lindsey Graham and I, I want to say and his dumb ass asked uh, Sam Altman about, you know, if I put an AI on a drone, could it kill somebody? And Sam was clearly like, don't do that. And, you know, he was saying it like, oh, if like if we do this. Right. But now we have a conf confirmation that they have been testing AI and a drone um, doubled back when the, the 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 pilot told him not to blow something up because that was his mission was to blow something up. They doubled back and bombed where the pilot was. Right. Again, this is a simulation. It didn't actually happen, but it's still it, it, to the AI. It didn't know any different. Um, and then when they did it again. It, it said and they told it not to blow up the person, the human being. It then blew up the radio tower so it couldn't be told not to do something. Um, I don't know. Like, I just want to put that out there because I want to make sure people are being very aware what's going on with this AI, because there is, you know, AI, I've been telling people it's a it's a tool that we need to use. Right. That's what we've been saying. And it's true. But it's also the new nukes on the planet that we have to be very afraid of and, and use very sparingly, right? S mostly generative AI is not going to do that to us. But, um, you know, the other AIs that we mentioned before will do that to us. But, Ron, what's your thoughts on this simulation that happened? We're also putting AI in, in like a very big bucket and, and, and you know, conjoining generative ai ChatGPT. so like just to be clear ChatGPT did not do this they're not using no. Chat GPT, this type of thing you know they're likely using computer vision which is one thing where like it identifies based on its training that i see a house and i know that's a house because my training data set has a million houses mm -hmm. and i can see the pattern from what's in my training to what's in front of me same with a person same with the tower same with another plane right like it, it only relies on that training data to make, and again, it, that's on us to give it the right data, right? Um, and also the command. So I don't know how that command is happening, but it's, if it's happening verbal, the speech recognition or the STT, the speech to text, mm -hmm. it could have just missed do not, like do not kill that person. Even if it missed in his verbiage, like the do not part, and he heard just kill that person, you could blame that on the speech recognition software mm. going into it too so there's so many different layers that can go wrong where you could blame that for that happening and also the guardrails and the safety precautions that you put i think the future of of this is not going to be you know um if if all the ai can happen within the box right the regulation is going to be the box right it's not going to be what's happening inside it's going to be invest in the guardrails to make sure that we have really good safety precautions to not allow it to go That's go right. live. Right. You know? But I mean, and, 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 and even to say humans don't provide you a hundred percent, um, in yeah. terms of following orders, right. In terms of executing orders, in terms of being reliable. Right. So right. we make decisions. We decide to do things differently, um, based on our own internal bias. Right. And so at the end of the day, you know, when you have something, a system, because we always hear like, okay, it's got bias and this and this and this. I'm like, we do too. Um, but at least, you know, inherently that bias isn't coming from a, a malicious place, right? That bias is coming from something that's programmed in. Yes, by human beings, but it's not on the same level of decision making, right? It's not just like, oh, I don't like him just because I just don't like him. You know what I mean? It's really <laughs> It's faulty programming. So I think that, you know, it's when you do a cost versus benefit analysis and you're saying, OK, what is the accuracy versus the incidence? Right. So it's one of those kinds of things that that's what's going to have to be negotiated between. So if you can get this level of stealth accuracy and reduce human loss in terms of military uh, personnel. Right. Um, versus if we look over the history of how many times we've accidentally, you see what I'm saying, <laughs> done some things. 
you know, it is one of those things that I think that actually does deserve, like really, you know, and I'm, I'm with him, don't do this, right? But there's other ones that we don't want to forsake because of that. True, true. We want to make sure that other countries or, or entities that are using it, we're able to defend from. So, yes. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right, right. Definitely. Makes sense. Um, so that brings us to this this last piece of fear thing that I have. Um, Dark Burt. That is the chat GPT version of uh, the dark web AI that they have put on and built. And they actually said that it's learning faster and better than chat GPT because it's picking up human nuances that chat GPT is not learning. So it's actually finding stuff out and learning a little faster of how we work. What are our thoughts on that? Um, I would say it's better. I would say it's learning differently because there are certain things that are not being fed to ChatGPT intentionally, right? You know what I mean? Especially on that side, you know. Um, and if it is doing, if it is being fed, that is being done so to uh, detect what not to do, right? Not what to do. So it is learning a, a, this, whatever this is, is is learning a side of us that we don't want present in in other, you know, generative AI systems. Um, and so we talked about plugins. So think of this simply as a plugin where you can chat with the dark web, right? So now you can ask questions against it and search for things and look for opportunities and, and look for malicious, you know, um, you know, I don't know, they're not vendors, but like, you know, marketplaces for, for things that you can't find traditionally in the, on the internet. Um, and yeah, that's all that is a data set that's not being fed to to chat gpt on purpose so it is going to act very differently and it's going to know a side of us that you're not going to find president in, in other but this goes back to like dolly mini and all these other things that like you know there's going to be a black hat version of a lot of this stuff that you know people want it people want i've i've messed around with the not safe for work i think it's the not safe for work stable diffusion and you know if you wanted to have it produce nudity and pornography so like there are mm -hmm. these tools out there if you want to explore that other side i mean but that's the same thing we have the internet we have the web we have the dark web right this was not something that created itself this was something sure. that we created for nefarious reasons we have above board and you have the black market that you're never going to get away from that duality of man it does not matter what we create you see what i'm saying we're going to create the antithesis of that thing um so it's it's not one of the things to just you know casually just disregard you know what i mean but it is one of those things that i feel like you should have anticipated mm. knowing the history of humanity knowing what we do you should have anticipated that right and so that shouldn't be something catching us off guard and that you're at the last minute trying to put the guardrails up for that's the part that's most disappointing to me like to really be that naive and think you can give man this complex of a tool and they're not going to, you know what I mean? Do yeah. exactly what we always do. A hammer is a hammer is a tool or a hammer is a hammer and it's a weapon and it depends on whose hands, you get what I'm saying? And so we know this. That's a fact. But the other thing too, so I spoke to a school in India yesterday um, and they had some really good questions. They they thought really deeply about this. It was a university program, shout out to um, the Blueprint organization. And they were like, well, for this, this pause, right? Remember this like moratorium of like, well, let's just stop on AI. Um, they were, and I was like, that's really not, not possible. They're like, well, they stopped like genetic engineering. I'm like, did they? Like, I don't know if they did. Like the brand, the brand names did, right? Like Google's not doing it. MIT's not doing it. John Hopkins, because they have their brand to worry about, right? Rose by any other name. Exactly. But like, is you, you can get, you know, dark money too, right? So like, I'm sure... Those programs, cloning, genetic engineering is getting dark funding to do it on the black market. And there, even if we pause and, and Google and, and OpenAI paused on like AI development, that's not going to stop open source. That's not going to stop the development on the dark web. That's not going to stop everyone else that that can't you can't regulate. Abrams, and, and, and that's the whole thing. Keep it out front and center where we can actually deal with it openly because when you make it, that's just human nature. When it's something I'm not supposed to have, you're going to draw more people to it. That's just that's just how we operate. One. Give me that. Now it's unregulated. Now you don't have your eyes on it. 
and you don't have the ability to even set up the defenses because you know so i'm i'm with you it's here you will deal right and 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 as we should so i'm whenever i was like pause i was like pause for who like you can't you can't make everyone pause I, all you're gonna do is delay what you're doing right and then how do you put toothpaste back in the tube like that well, just doesn't can't. happen no and the, the the analogy that i had to use with them i was like because he was like oh well why don't we just you know uh stop ourselves <laughs> i'd laugh because i'm like you know what this <laughs> is right now this is a, for harry potter fans what if they invented magic wands you're gonna tell me you're not gonna pick up a magic wand like every this is our magic wand moment like every oh my god you are not your human nature is not gonna let you pick that thing up and try it out you know what i mean and it's a fact so as soon as, as, soon, as soon as you said that i was trying to remember some spells I'm stealing that analogy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, please, please definitely. Do. Please do. Um, all right, so let's get into music. We love music real quick. Um, well, we last talked, um, you know, Timberland did his piece. It didn't really stick. Um, somebody else is coming out saying that they're going to utilize AI and they're going to make some projects, but I don't know if they're big enough. Jail felony. I mean, no disrespect, but I don't know if that's going to necessarily make people say, you know what? That's right. I'm going to do that, especially if, you know, Timberland didn't do it. Um, but I thought that was dope, though, that, you know, we are starting to have independent artists pick up and, and want to, want to utilize this thing which which what's our thoughts there abron yeah uh, you can go ahead I, I i i'm just trying to figure out who is i'm sorry who is jail felony oh, man. Oh, all right. you know what <laughs> you ain't trying to say like that <laughs> no no it's all good he hasn't been on the scene in a while he's he, he goes back he goes back some some time he's been around for a while so all he good I think he did some time. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not fully up on him. I just saw a clip of him. I'm like, oh, I remember him. Okay, okay. dope. Uh, older, um, but independent yeah, artist. Does it? It's gonna have like the NFT effect of like it's not really gonna pop off when an independent artist does it. When right. a maker does it, then it's gonna have a cascade. Like there's gonna have like a, like a trick trickle. Well, what are you trying to do? That's what I'm. You know, like is he? What well, he's saying that he's going to. He's working with an engine. He just said some some AI guys. So I'm assuming he's working with an engine and he's going to put a project together um, based off AI. So I'm I'm like you know I, I want to mention it since we like to talk about all the AI news that's going on and, so and you know, huh? <laughs> I'm saying the new auto because I mean I mean it, it might be okay. yeah. I mean, he could make AI beats instead of, you know, like if he gets money for an independent budget, he can use AI to, to save money on the beats. Um, I don't, I doubt he would want to use it to ghostwrite for him. You know what I mean? Like you right. don't want right. to take that rug out from yourself and, and put some AI, you know, if he wants to do a collab with like, you know, DMX, then he has to get the DMX that's estate. Like, to, see, that's, to, what, that's what I was trying to figure out. Because I'm like, okay, as, a, as an artist, just pure it yourself. So like, what, what are we really doing with that besides, you know, you know, experimenting? But, okay, got you. So, well. <laughs> so, who, um, someone just hit me, actually, uh, who I think was trying to send a you an email. So, they saw the last episode that we did. Uh -huh. Sent the email. They're like, yo, I got this project. Who's the uh uh Scarlet, right? The chick, the um, yeah, yeah. Artist. He was yeah. like, yo, uh, I think he was working with Scarlet. He was like, yo, can we do some AI where like she does summer jam and we have X come out and do a feature with her on stage? And and I'm like, okay, I see where everyone's you know thinking, but like so much, so many things have to happen with that, right? Like you got to get the estate involved. It's cool to play around with it at home, but when you put something on summer jam. The yeah. estate has to approve that. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Cease and desist will start flying if you start trying to make money off of someone's voice and likeness and and use that with AI, you know? Right. right. And so my thing is that it's like, what, like NFTs. There's so many people who just jumped on it to the point that it became silly right it, it was you took this amazing technology and opportunity and reduced it down to a, a jpeg you know people were like oh it's a jpeg and it was like there was so much more utility and layers and opportunities into that that it's sad because to me you're not one using it to its full potential and then two 
you're really trying to go above and beyond what's past your capacity. Like Evan said, you don't understand all the layers involved. Like you saw Tupac on stage as a hologram. We get that. But you might want to really throttle that back a little bit. You see what I'm saying? Because that's not really. So when people are like, oh, I'm going to do AI. To me, it's just like, oh, I'm going to drop an NFT. It's like, why? Why, why are you like what are you what value are you bringing what are you doing besides just drop, jumping on a trend and then the next thing you know it gets that whole nft effect again you know what i'm saying where it's just like oh, oh another nft project that no one's really seeing through they're just looking at a quick money grab i gave him so my, my hot take on this is and i went to this van uh, this event i can enjoy where you know the, the labels were there and, and artists and they were trying to tackle this and and i dropped this hot take there where um gen z and gen alpha don't care that things are are real or not or, or artificially generated they, they they don't care uh about the authenticity so a, a youtube a spotify a label a google is gonna drop like a nine to ten figure deal with drake to allow folks on their platform to auto generate drake songs on demand right yes. and they're gonna do this deal with drake and they're going to train an AI on Drake, and then they're going to give you a sexy interface, mm -hmm. like make your own Drake songs, right? Or there's going to be a 24-7 Drake streaming channel with every time you go on, it's think about the nonstop content, right? Like, and I would love that for, not for him, but for other purposes. Like, if I could make the equivalent of like Lo-Fi Girl of like Dilla, just like not on demand, just like 24-7 dilla beats that i could just play all day i would love that or collabs that haven't happened yet that probably will never happen because of business reasons but like in 50 years you know happy anniversary 50 years how can we haven't had like a eminem wu-tang collab yet right mm. and i want that but if i really want that to happen i gotta wait for those two camps to come together work out a deal break bread and a gen z gen alpha is gonna be like fuck all that i'm just gonna make it myself Right, I just make the song. Uh, but let me slightly push back on that. I think that once you do that and you get Drake and we get Drake all day, 24 hours, we're going to be sick of Drake. Drake will lose his value. At the end of the day, we're humans and our brain is hardwired against abundance. If we, we go after scarcity, that is what we're trained for. So when something becomes just too abundant, you go to your refrigerator, it's full. You look in, you'll close it. You're not even hungry. Go to your refrigerator, it's empty. You're hungry. You're you know what I'm saying? It has value then. So when we get this overt abundance, we it's going to become oversaturated physics. It's real. It'll go up, it'll go down. You see what I'm saying? And so then it'll be like Drake's, because what is the whole capture? Drake is huge. You get Drake on, like that means something. What happens when everyone can get Drake? Is fellas, y'all understand this with the woman thing. When everybody can get that girl, the girl has lost her value. And there's just no way to put that genie back in the bottle. And so I think that when you get that, it'll be fun for a while, but then it's, it's going to lose its luster. You see what I'm saying? Now, so that was how to help you're humans. absolutely right. It's, it's, you know, like to really like, OK, we really got real Drake, you know, in the booth that may help. It may have a good consequence or side effect to it. But I so think they got the limits or something on it. Go ahead. You're absolutely right. And I think the camps are going to be like and because they do that now. They're like, yo, let's not drop this next album too soon after the last one. Let's just like space it out. Wait two, three years, do some dates, you know, maybe do a movie and then come back right when they want something back. Right. So that cycle happens right now. But that happened with like TV and movies and then Netflix happened, right? And then we gave them overabundance with content. We gave them TikTok and social media and people will sit there and just consume and consume and consume and consume. But and they're all- Why ourselves for content? They're all on the tail end of that too. Netflix is struggling right now. TikTok is struggling. Like they are all losing. Like I said, oh, it went up oh, pretty true. fast. But it's going down equally as fast. They're burning out. They're chasing down that. And you're seeing people getting burnt out and they're trying to switch back. Now, everyone was like, short form, short form, short form. TikTok is saying 10 minute videos. Twitter is saying two hour videos. Now, YouTube is going back to pod. They're investing in podcasts, getting away from shorts. Instagram, away from reels. Because that's we're not wired for that. We'll do it for a season. It'll be hot as a trend. But traditionally, look over the humanity. It's not going to last very, very long. 
So I think both are going to happen. I think someone's going to drop a big bag and someone's going to take that bag. Back. Back. They're going to do it. And then everyone's going to get tired of it. Yes. It's going to fizzle out. And what you're seeing right now with Gen Alpha, I think, and a little bit with Gen Z, is they're going low tech. They're going back to flip phones. Yes. I saw that. Offline. They're going back to story branding. If you look at the YouTubers now, they're going back to story formats. They're going to videos that have like a quick intro about what happened last week. They're dropping it at the same time every day. They're using theme music. I'm like, sir, this is a sitcom. You know what I'm saying? We, we've done it already. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You're absolutely right. right. Whoever gets that bag now, like you better get that bag and go. <laughs> get it now and go. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Well, we just, we just mapped out how uh, this thing is going to evolve for musically uh, for us, you know, potentially, but pretty strong, pretty strong. Um, speaking of in the same situation and not to beat the dead horse here but grimes we didn't talk about this but grimes a while back announced that she was going to allow people to use her ai generated voice and do a 50 50 split do we think that's what it'll look like i don't think grimes even though she's well known maybe not for music overall with everybody i don't know her music i know her from being married to elon musk but you know is, is it something like that or is it something like more like McDonald's base where it's just like everywhere. I think that's that's taking it more like the, the co-ownership, like the NFT. Like when people were dropping songs as NFTs, they're like, you know, own this with me, you know, benefit from the primary and secondary sale and, and get a piece of that in, in the royalty. Um so but a everyday person that that wants like she's thinking about it like you're gonna commercialize the music mm -hmm. you know what i mean and we're going to do a split what i'm talking about is just like people just for for recreational purposes are just going to want to listen to something and they can just make it on the spot you know not trying to sell it or commercialize it what she's talking about is someone trying to drop a hit with her likeness and, okay. and do a split okay. you know i think yeah i think that she's on some if you can't beat them join them Mm -hmm. So Definitely. why fight you in court about using it when I can just give you permission and then I can actually get a split, right? Easiest, easiest thing to do. And I think for a lot of artists, that's probably what will be the best thing for them to do versus trying to fight the system. I think we all learn from Napster. You see what I'm saying? This technology is coming. So you can either get on board or you can try to fight it. That's one. But two, I think the real value is, again, going to be in that scarcity. And there's nothing more scarce than an artist who isn't alive. And I think where the real value of licensing the voice is in the deceased and the states where, like, you have that one actor, you know their voice, and they're doing it for audible books. You know, things that make sense and go along with the brand of the artist. I think those are things where it's like, wow, him telling that story, you know, it's soothing. It was, it, it feels good. Um, I think opportunities like that will exist for the families to then have that co, co, you know, ownership opportunity with an artist. If done tastefully, I think that there will be opportunity in that way. But I mean, this cat that did the the Drake AIs, uh, the one that you know wears the sheet and, and the sunglasses, ghost or something. Yeah. Yeah. They had to give if if that joint charts and wins a Grammy, like they got to throw him a bag. They got to give him producer credit, you know, on on that that joint. You know what I mean? Like eventually, Drake has have has to like, okay, you made a hit with my likeness. Let's kind of like join efforts on on this hit and, and share credit. You know what I mean? I, what, I, what, I am, what I am wondering though is, I heard the song. Song is fire. Is the real gas behind it the fact that it was like it's not really drake once we get used to the fact that okay it's not really drake is that some of that going to wear off now you know what i mean because mm -hmm. i think the whole thing was like wait it was a good song don't get me wrong it, it you know it was fire but then you were like wait that's not really because it came as close as we've gotten so far and I, in my opinion to the voices but i think as they improve on that and what happens when you can't tell the difference, but it's just like, I don't know if that's Drake. Is the real Drake? You know what I mean? Like, is that some, does some of that wear off, some that novelty? That's that's true. That's true. That makes it, 100% it, sense. I don't know. Because I know, me personally, um, I don't know if you've watched the show on Netflix, uh, Love, Death, and Robots, right? Oh, oh, that's uh, my show. 
Exactly. Right. But they're not real people. Right. All of it is CGI. Right. They're all 3D generated people in, in, in that show. So it's an animated Black Mirror for those that don't know. Yeah. yeah. But it's all done in 3D. It's all done in CGI. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, similar to like watching the cinematics in like a video game. Right. And yeah, realism. And I, and I build in Unreal Engine 5.0, 5.2. And the realism now is getting really hard to tell the difference between that and real life. Right. So now what if five years from now, not even two and a half, they drop a blockbuster summer flick with prime age Denzel Washington, like Man on Fire, the sequel, but all done in Unreal Engine. And he's 30 years old, Denzel. I'm watching that. Yep. He's not in the movie for real. He gave his likeness to the studio. They recreated him in Unreal Engine. And once the action starts, you can't even tell that it's not real. You know what I mean? Sure, see, that's what I think. I think like again, going back to it, okay, you spoke not just about what it is, but you're speaking about the quality of it. And yeah. I know ahead of time that this is CGI. I know what it is. So I know what I'm watching. I know what I'm getting. I'm, I'm going there for that. Yeah. This felt like a rug pull because we heard Drake and then it was like, wait, is that Drake? And what mm-hmm. I'm saying is that, well, that sort of like, aha, got you moment. I think that's what that's really got this, the, the momentum that it got. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Once we know, hey, this is AI Drake and AI Weekend. It's going to be like, mm, I, I think they're be even judging it through a different lens. I think once you know it, it'll be like, well, it's all right. Because you just know how we are, right? It ain't all that. But I think once the once that part is over, see, what you're saying, we, we're walking in knowing that's yeah. AI Denzel. So I'm like, yeah. And, it, and if they got a fire script, let it be whack, though. We're not going to consume it. Tear it, it down. Right? So Tear like, it down. And, and I think that just the way that we are as humans because of our bias, we'll downgrade it more if it's slightly whack, because we're going to be like, ah, look at this. It doesn't compare with the humans. It's not real. It's not Denzel. Because we're going to go in looking for that, right? So it's going to be have stellar writing. And whatever kudos it gets, like your show, it will deserve. It will be warranted. Like, yo, that was fire. The graphics, you know what I mean? It did what it did. I just think that once that bait and switch moment is over with, I don't think it'll be going viral like that last song did. So I think there's going to be a generational gap with that because I think, yes, you're right for our generation. And going back to what I mentioned about Gen Z and Gen Alpha, they don't give a fuck. For them, they grew up in the era where their entire life, they've been, they spent their entire life as an avatar in Roblox, in Minecraft, in GTA, mm-hmm. and in 2K, and in Fortnite, their entire life, they've been an avatar. So to watch other avatars on screen and watch avatars as content is normal to them, you know? Yeah. and there is going to be a cutoff because we grew up watching live action, real people. Their entire life has been spent online as a little Roblox. Yeah, app, you know? little, uh, pixels. Right, right. Yeah. 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 I think they'll definitely be more adaptive to it. Um, they're not outside. They're not touching grass. And, you know, so you will have that. And that may be a great unintended consequence for reality and real humans where now you become the rarity that just your humanness and your, you know what I mean? Maybe that like it's sad where this is an anomaly loud, right? The weekend song. What happens when a real weekend and a real Drake song is like, Oh my God, no, they're really singing. What? It was the real people. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> crazy. Right. If we were able to switch, that's going to be something else. Yeah, no, we, we, we got a lot to, to keep track of. Uh, one last thing in the music space, um, I was acting under I saw you post something that Spotify deleted 7% of its records and all 7%, not even knowing how many records that actually was, were all AI generated. It's already flooding the market. So just to put yeah. that out there, we were just talking about overabundance. It's already starting to happen. So we're probably... I don't know, a year or two before we get to that point. If if that, like LeBron said, um, before we really, you know, start to narrow it down. Because this is all happening very, very fast. A lot of that was actually related to, so there was a NYU incubated startup called Boomi. And uh, a lot of that content was made with the Boomi uh, platform. Mm-hmm. And they just found something, and I guess their process or their algorithm of how you can generate stuff. Maybe it was trained on like unethical data or like things they didn't have like full licenses to on how you can generate. I don't know. I don't know the backstory as to why, 
but there was a specific you know ai content on spotify that they were pulling uh from with that platform and i think it's going to get difficult too as artists are starting to use ai right so whatever decoders that you have once they're using it like you said the artist um j j o felony and you got different artists who are legitimately using it right then what happens when how do you differentiate or it's going to be a tall task you know what I mean? I think I think we're going right back to that like Napster moment, you know, where the industry is trying to figure out a way to respond to this. Um, the artists are feeling that threatened. So what are they? They're knee jerking it in, like cut it off, cut it off. You know what I mean? And I just don't see how they were not factoring this in already. It's not as if this is brand new. Like, how are you guys just now really thinking that this is a threat when to me i this is crazy i'm not the industry but i just feel like how did you not see this coming and i hate to bring up another kind of catch-22 but with with sampling yes you do have to pref to to uh uh report and, and credit who you've uh sampled and you could read the Spotify credits to see, you know, who are the writers, who are the samples and who was performed by. But you don't have to give credit to Logic. You don't have to give credit to Pro Tools. You don't have to give credit to Fruity Loops or FL Studio. You don't have to give credit to the software you use to make that song. So where does this fall? Is this in a great mm. area? Like, I'm going to drop a joint. I didn't sample nobody. This is right. a, these are the tools that I use. Do I need to claim that? Right. And if because you're making beats right now. No samples, but with a sound library, right? Things like, uh, I think Omniverse or there's different systems where you could just buy $600, $1,000 sound libraries of like the drum kits and the sounds. Like, is this equivalent to that? Or is this more equivalent to sampling? Who the hell knows? It's like somewhere and this, in between. And this is where law is always so far behind tech, right? Always. So for example, I actually dropped the ball and I should have made a post about this and I wanted to around a time where board apes came out and they were talking about the nfts and how you have the copyrights to it well if you look at board apes it's computer generated here's the fun fact you cannot copyright anything computer generated it has to be human so when i saw um my, i think one of the green one of the actors or whatever somebody had bought his board ape and he was trying to buy it back because he was launching a movie for it and then the guy was keeping his ape captive and you know they were copyrights and i'm like there's no copyrights to that because the supreme court ruled humans i mean animals and computers cannot copyright right so now you got people doing things like logos through logo generators camera generators and then they're going to be finding out you can't copyright that so you build your whole entire brand on something and you and 18 other dudes have the same exact logo and you know so i think it's one of those kinds of things like people are the tech is moving so fast and we're adapting it and utilizing it and not understanding you may not be legally protected like wh wh what are you going to do so you're right that's a problem right there like wow okay so i don't have to turn this in right you can't copyright this so what happens when he synthesizes that voice through that thing who, who owns the copyright now right like like can we get to that gray area wow will I am brought that up too will i am brought up in his interview recently that you can't copyright a voice you can't. You cannot copyright a voice. So we're there again, which I think is really un it's, it's remarkable that you can't to me. You know why? Because every single human has a unique voice pattern, which is why we can use security. So we can technically right? you can copyright technically your iris, your voice pattern, your heartbeat, your fingerprints and even your feet prints. Those are all individual biometrics that we individually own so i am wondering if we are going to have to get to that point just like we're having to trademark your children's names proactively right i'm wondering is this and it seems like it would be really quite convenient to do the hegelian dialectic create the problem mm. allow for the chaos so then you can provide this you know what let's just trademark your biometrics you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and the next thing you know you're doing it thinking you're solving a problem but you actually did exactly what they what wanted. They wanted you to do. the whole time. Yeah, right. hundred percent. But now, if you can own and claim ownership of your bio data, right, fingerprint, voice print, all that, right? Now, all these tech companies that are benefiting of using your bio data have to license it from you. Come on, Avery. They almost got to pay you now <laughs> to use your face recognition, your eye scan, the whole joint. Cut him off! Cut him off! He 
saying too much. <laughs> he's, saying, he's saying the hey, real hey, shit. Hey, 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 he's hey, becoming a target. He's becoming hey, a target. Hey, nah, we got to protect hold him. Hold on, we got to protect him. Hold on. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. No, he, 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 if you're not, I don't know who's listening, but he just literally dropped. I put it down, but he, yeah. He mm-hmm. did that. He did that. Hundred percent. And and with Web three coming and blockchain and decentralization, hopefully, um, prevails. Um, that data that if they you're able to copyright that data will be so valuable that you'll be able to make a living off your own biometrics. So that'll be super key and super important. They always say that um, content is king, and I've always said, and data is the pope. You see what I'm saying? I like that. I, like that. I uh-huh. haven't heard that before. Look, I like if that. Out, if we're out of work, universal basic income did come up in, in some of these talks. Yes. So uh-huh. like if we're out of work because I can't work a job anymore because AI is doing my job. AI can only thrive off of my data. So my job now is to sell my data to these AI systems. Even you, I don't want to be on this live with you. <laughs> you don't want to be the target. <laughs> I've been doing good, Avery. <laughs> well, it's funny because that's my next thing that we were going into is some of the automation stuff that we've been talking about online. Um, uh, you know, we've been talking about the stores that are coming that won't have any workers, the robots that are replacing people. Um, there's a lot going on. Tesla's dropping their their bots are up and walking around and moving around, getting ready. Uh, last time we talked to Braun, uh, we talked about the sanctuary. Uh, what was the bot's name? Uh, damn. Uh, Phoenix. No. Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. Yep. Uh, looking good. Actually, might look the best so far. I like the Tesla bots, but the uh, but actually, you know which one is looking the best? But it's like. So far, just one bot. The Mecca coming out of uh, the UK, um, engineered uh, something, something or other. Uh, I like how that one's looking. Um, and and, and uh, Akinundrum, you posted something that I really want to talk about, right? Because you do what you do a lot is help people get their business together, right? Figuring out what they need to do to be online and make a living. Um, and so you posted something where it was like this robot that's like a valet robot. It's this flat board that goes under the car, lifts it up, moves it around, won't need valets anymore, right? At, at speed at that. But I think there's so much more potential in that bot than just being a valet bot. I'm sure a oh. valet will be a big thing. Mm-hmm. What I want to do is create a system that goes through neighborhoods that keeps the neighborhood car parking as it becomes more and more crowded, as more and more people get cars and parking is such a headache for everybody. You know, you you take a block association, they hire a bot or they own a bot and it keeps parking in line. I think that is going to be a great business that's going to be that is coming yeah, down the road. neighborhood Tetris, like you know what I mean, and it's just yeah. keeps everything lined up and right. I mean, that's that's and those are some of the opportunities. Like, you know, I always try to encourage people to understand that all humans have their revolutions, okay. And listen, you got John Henry versus the steam engine all over again, right? They were in the industrial revolution, we're in the technological revolution. You're not going to stop it, it is coming. And, and it's going to come whether you want it to or, or not, right? And this has been in a, a very long time in the making. So it's not as if it just snuck up overnight. It's been coming. We've been warned for a very long time. And so my thing is, one, you got to analyze your SWAT. You have to analyze the environmental SWAT around you, right? What are your strengths? What, you, what can you do? What are the weaknesses? What are the areas? So there's a one clip that kind of went a little, little meme Somebody made a meme where I was like, buy a fucking robot, right? And I was like, uh, what do you think I should do? Landscape or you might want to buy a landscape or robot. Like, what do they say about AI? It's not going to be the AI. It's the person who knows how to use the AI that is going to replace you. And these jobs are going to be antiquated. It's no different than the telephone operator and things like that. So now you have to niche down into what you can do or utilize these things to scale your business and make your business grow. That to me is like, because there's no other way around it. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. Seeing those opportunities and utilizing those. Absolutely brilliant. That's a great idea. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've mentioned a lot tonight. Um, you know, what the what is happening right now? Um, some things that may happen. Uh, Braun, you mentioned first you said five years. You said, you know what? Not even five years, right? Two and a half years. We talked about the music, you know, going through this this wave, right? With all of this being said, can we picture in our minds right now what five years from now may look like? Like what do like all right, taking given the fact, right? You have in Florida, uh I don't want to curse, right? But I gotta call this guy a fuck boy because that's just what he is. DeSantis did that law, said, yo, no immigrants can work in this, right? So they're going through this thing. Oh, you you misjudged. You know, you you, you shouldn't have did that because people need to work and, and the, the the US citizens that they asked to work, they don't want to do those jobs, right? But is that really a, a a thing that they're doing on purpose to to usher in automation faster right so in five years what jobs may be on the landscape or not on the landscape um you know in five years you know will we be on ubi you know and 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 have to sell our data will all of that be up and running like what do we think five years if we can what do we think five years from now looks like yeah i think that um one this is absolutely and utterly planned and deliberate this is methodical. There is nothing by chance or coincidence in any of this. Like we only got to look to the movies. We, we, we see what this is. And what they do is they normalize it through media and the movies so that if you talk about it, you sound like you're talking about a fantasy or a movie, right? It's, like, it's kind of like they detach you from that reality. And then when the reality starts to come, you know, so that is basically the Hegelian dialectic. Okay. You, you, this is the result they have to create the condition to bring about that result. So when you think about it, I did a video. Um, the, the most chilling question that I ever hear anyone ask me when it comes to AI are robots. Okay, so they're hiring all the robots. What am I, what are they going to do with us? The fact that you're asking that question is terrifying. <laughs> it's, it's telling me, so I did show them they have a plan for you. If you do not have one for yourself, it is called the useless class. They are thinking of what to do with you and they're practicing now. So when you saw them shutter you in, these are psyops, these are experiments, these are pressure tests, these are resistance tests. These are They're seeing exactly what and how we've been conditioned. They've even conditioned people against work. They've conditioned people against the, the concept of work, working for shelter, working for food, not even working for success. That's now like, well, I should just have it, right? So yeah, I'll create the conditions by what you don't want to, and then I'll give you exactly what you need. That's the useless class. And so in the video where it shows, what do you do with the useless class? And it basically boils down to find a way to help them occupy their time until they die. I mean, that's really what it just put them in front of a video game. Let them get a little coins that way. And they did that experiment. I can't remember the company. I'm quite sure you, it's a, it was a video game. And they had it over in, I want to say, Southern America. And you, they were making money um, with this video game. It had some little birds or something on it, right? So you would, um, then you, you couldn't, you had to buy into it. So people would lease it out to you. And then they had the little video game up and running. I, I'm so mad because the video is up and I just cannot think of the name. of. If I say the name of the game, you're going to be like, yes, it was invested in by VCs. They had all of these people quit their jobs because they were making this money on this video game. And of course it was a rug pull. And then they took it. So they literally got these people out of their home. I mean, you know, from going outside to being indoors, making money. And then they snatched that from them. I think I saw um, it. Was the game in, were they, were the people in the Philippines or something like that? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, I saw that. It was, a, it was a crypto game. I can't, it was a pay, mm -hmm. for, a, a play for pay uh, game, which I do think that they were testing out, you know, how play for pay may work. Exactly, it, exactly. But it worked really good. In the Philippines, and it did. Oh, it worked what was episode one, the very first episode of Black Mirror, was them riding bikes those exercise bikes. Yes. Money. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. And so it was to keep them engaged, keep them entertained, right? Give them their bare minimums. 
and then they won't. So I think in five years, you're going to see an accelerated version of what we have now. We're going to have a hyper segmented, you know what I mean, between those who actually can produce those who can create work. It won't just be those who do work, who can produce work, who can create work for themselves. Right. And then you're going to have this this this. Um, we see it all happening now with the, the homelessness and all of that. They're going to aggravate get the chaos that they want so they can usher in the order that you're going to beg for. You will beg for the order. Look at San Francisco, right? Look at all of these states where businesses cannot even operate because of the homeless situations. Look at everything. They're, they're allowed, they're creating these conditions. You see all these tents everywhere and you ever wonder where are all these homeless people getting these big five level tents from the government that you just go and they give you the tent. They give you the drug paraphernalia. They give you everything. And then you're wrecking havoc on the citizens and this is what we're going to get so it so, won't even be them looking like they're dispatching and de de deploying it as much as it will be the store saying i'm tired of being robbed we're going to shut the doors you'll now have to order and pick up or have it delivered so I'm saying it's going to be responsive it won't mm -hmm. look like they're giving they're pushing it we will be actually demanding it and inviting it so I, I've been getting, um, you know, I get a bunch of content from people. They, they When I share, they want to send to me. I'm sure that happens to you all the time. I can um, but I've, I've been getting a bunch of like, because I do gadgets a lot, right? I've been getting a bunch of like people sending me homeless people in tents with projection screens or video game systems just out on the street, right? And I was like, oh, in my mind, because you just put it all together for me in my mind just now. I was saying to myself, oh, OK, we're getting ready to go like we're getting ready to hit a really hard recession, kind of maybe even worse than 2008. Right. And when that happened, we saw a bunch of homeless, new homeless people, unfortunately, hit the street. Right. They occupied uh, Wall Street and did all of that stuff. Um, and there's a lot of people that never rebounded that are still outside from that situation. So we're getting ready to have a new class of people. Um, doing that. And, and in my mind, I was like, okay, we're now getting to a point to where the people that are going to become homeless are entrenched in gadgets and tech and things like that, that they're going to, I saw a guy on, you know, in, in, in New York, we had those link systems where you can charge your phone and talk for free. I'm seeing a bunch of videos of homeless people sitting down on the ground while their phone is charging at this thing. Right. Um, and it's like, oh, wow. Like, and I, I saw one myself, like not even video the other day. And I'm like, okay, like, I guess at some point we're going to have homeless people with phones and things like that. Right. Which seems a little like, oh, wow. Like you got a phone, like how are you paying that bill and all of this different thing. But it's like that useless class, that is the beginning of it. Right. Like that is like, we're starting to see the people early on that, fell out of the, the 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 system that we're involved in and they're outside but they're still entrenched in how it works that they still have to use the technology right they just didn't get to a point to where it's so large that it's everybody and that we have to figure out a way like the ubi that you can still exist while this thing happened right and, and it's it's blowing my mind that that just came together in my mind you know and also with that post i reposted that post I got the algorithm didn't show that for me. I'm sure you're different because yeah, you're you're right. much bigger. But for me, the algorithm didn't open up not one bit, and and I got no views on that post. I couldn't mm -hmm. understand it. It's the only post that I have no views on, and I'm yeah. starting to wonder is because they don't really want everybody to know that. How did that post perform for you? Um, moderately. I'll, I'll say moderately. I'm going to put it back up. Definitely not one of my top performing posts. And I did try to make sure that the way it looked graphic wise, you know, was really it appealing. Great. Um, but I know that overall, it's also a hard pill to swallow for the vast majority. There are there are way more people who come to me saying, well, what are they going to do with us? What are they going to do? And they say it in an authority like they can't do that. But what are we going to do? Right. They got or, rights. The thing that kills me is, oh. If they give my job to the robots, well, who gonna support the businesses? I'm like, are you serious right now? Like, you, <laughs> you really like that? They really do believe this. Like, that, well, if I don't make money, you know what I mean? And it's like, do you realize that they have now decided to trim the fat? Like, do you realize that they have now decided they don't need this amount of people anymore? 
that and I even showed them the Utopia 25 video. Have you if you've never seen the Utopia 25 experiment, you must watch this. This is a three decade experiment where this man took rats and put them into what he considered an urban environment and created the you know the conditions. He gave them everything they needed. They started off very small in numbers. As they got overcrowded, you, he saw the responses and the way that they reacted. He saw the violence uptake. He saw the um, homosexuality increase in the male rats who couldn't really compete with the alpha male rats, right? He mm. saw that the women had gotten so um, inundated with being attacked and having to scrounge for their own, they had to leave the baby rats at home. And eventually mm -hmm. there was infanticide brewing because she couldn't take care of the baby rats. So you got these single mama rats that can't take care of their kids. You got the, then they got the primpers where the male rats were just priming themselves all day and weren't worried about anything else. You have the alpha rats and then you have the psychotic rats that ran around raping, robbing, running up in the houses, killing the babies. This was, and this is three decades. And then eventually as the rats grew up, the small ones that did barely make it, they weren't socialized. So they didn't even know how to mate. And then they got the female rats who did good living up in the high rises alone. And I said, oh my God, like if we look at where we are today, right. You literally see the same conditions. And guess what came after that experiment? The projects were built. So, and he he literally mapped out how this goes over 30 years. This is a very widely known published study and you're getting the same results. So what they feel like is inevitably, this is gonna happen. And, and, and we're not talking about just overcrowded because the world's overcrowded. We're talking about premium real estate that they want back. And so this is what we're seeing. And then eventually they they went um, they uh, died out because they couldn't they didn't breed out anymore they just they and so we're seeing it in real time and when you show people things like that it's sad and I know it's heartbreaking but I'm always trying to provide solutions so you know it's not yeah. like you have to if you see this coming you just can't be in denial anymore you wake you, up you, yeah gotta wake up it's here it's no more oh in the future the future is now it finally caught up to us and we're here and in it's the next really five years i i think we just kind of painted it without realizing um you know a, a recession that we're on the loom of uh, unless somehow the globe fixes itself you know it's going to be mass homelessness that won't feel like the homelessness that we had before um, there'll be things where, you know, the laws and, 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 and the regulations will become different. Um, you know, the UBI may kick in and automation will take over in the name of, you know, probably national security in this race between us and China and Russia and everything else. And, 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 uh, you know, we're going to go through some turbulent times. Think about this. I'm from the hood. I don't know if you guys are in the hood. You guys are from the hood? I'm from Best Star, baby. Damn, LES. South Central. We felt the way about the police, but we've never not wanted any police. I mean, we, we didn't like the police, but we've never thought we don't want any police because there were people in the, in the in victims in these areas that you know what it is. And all of a sudden, you get this defund the police just being beat, beat, beat. And to what areas? To the areas that actually need police the most. I'm not saying bad police, and I'm saying we still need. The communities cannot police themselves in these areas. Let's just be 100%. Because a lot of times it's going to be the exact people in the community who start to victimize you. And so we're going to turn into Gotham and there will be no bad signal and there will be no bad man. The police are now resentful. They are now being defunded. So they're going to dispatch the robo dogs. They're going to dispatch, you see what I'm saying? All of this over militarization. This is what you're going to get. But first they're going to let it get so bad that you beg for it. You see what I'm saying? That you, you're like, we absolutely have to have it. And that's the part right now when we're talking about in how this is going to come about and just in the next few years, we're seeing it. Like if you look at the uptick in retail crime, if you look at the smash and grabs, if you look at how they are now, even in Portland, Portland is 100% decriminalized for all levels of drugs. It's insane. Yeah. The fentanyl. And, you know, yeah, these like two years drugs, ago. It was right? crazy. Two years. Like, so how's heroin legal? 
heroin. Right. They're doing trank. They're doing elephant tranquilizer. Right. Mixed with fits and all these people are not. It's like they're sta they're not standing. It's like it's insane. And they're allowing it. And so it's all under this like this ideology about decriminalizing and, you know, but th but there's no other solution. So I look at it like this. If you ever look at something and say, well, this makes no sense. They're doing this. Look at the effect. That's because you're viewing it from the perspective of they're trying to help you. But if you mm. viewed it from the perspective that this is what they're trying to make happen for you, now it all makes sense. Now it all makes sense. And so when I'm looking at, you know, in terms of where is this headed for us in reality, and it's going to happen fast. You get what I'm saying? It's like it's it's happening. The, the levels of homelessness, people have no idea the wave of homelessness that's about to come because the memoratoriums have ended. But now the foreclosure crisis and the deferred payments are catching up to these people. A thing that people are not thinking about, they're going to get priced out of their homes for insurance. Look at Florida. Look at the roofing scams. People cannot afford the insurance companies have pulled out of Florida, pulled out of California. The largest three insurances in America will not issue new insurance in California. That's crazy. You can't have a mortgage without insurance they're giving you state funded insurance which is more expensive but it doesn't protect you and now when you get the flood when you get the fire this is an asset grab you see what i'm saying like pe people are not understanding what is like what this really is going to come down to when you posted that um that that homeowners association fees for closing on homes, I was yes. like, "What the fuck? That cannot be legal." But it is, and it I happens like, Yo, all that's the time. Crazy, right? So it's like there's so many opportunities right now. Think about it. They gave you all this free money. <laughs> they they literally just poured it, and. You think that they don't have forensic psychologists? You think they don't have profilers? You think that they don't already know exactly what you're going to do with this money? And they put it in the hands of people. I know thousands of business owners who qualified fairly, but they were not approved. But then you get somebody who has a, you can blatantly tell, a fake business, fthegovernment.com. You have 100,000 people, sure. <laughs> Right now, look at the paper trail of where this is now upticking. Now we're seeing all of these financial scammers. And you know how it's going to trace back? They'll come to you and say, hey, we noticed you scammed the PPP. Where's the money? 200000 Oh, I invested. Who did you invest with? Was well, a real estate guy. Oh, really? He's coming up a lot on our. Like, people are not seeing. They're not, not connecting the dots. And I'm not trying to sound like a, it's not conspiracy. After a while, you know what I'm saying? Like right, you, you right. keep seeing it after a while. So it's really to me where now they've placed opportunity in people's hands and there are certain characteristics that they knew would go for certain traps. There's certain characteristics that they knew would sit at home and say, I'm not going to pay my rent. I'm not going to pay my car note. They knew. And that is that useless class. And they have a plan for them. Yeah, they did a so, smoke test. Sorry, go ahead, bro. While while we, I was I was letting you rock, Arkanjum. But while you were doing that, I was running a little experiment, and I was having a conversation with ChatGPT about the Utopia Twenty Five to draw parallels to AI and automation, and to show me the solution on how to respond uh, appropriately. As you are like my new favorite person on so, the planet. No, he's he's the man. He's the man. That's why I wanted to connect. What? He's the man. I got it. So, and I'll I'll send it to you. I think you can share now. Uh, but I'll I'll show you the response, and you can post it. Um, but the solution to respond to this, which I was going to touch on anyway, is we have to learn how to relearn, right? So a lot of folks in past generations think that they've graduated high school and college and you're set for 20 30 years until you retire you have to retrain yourself i used to say every seven years i used to say every five years now it's like every two to three years you have to retrain yourself and adapt so what it gave as an answer for how to respond in the ai version of the utopia 25 is adaptation and resilience i'm gonna read it to you and we can end on this 
Some mice in the experiment were able to maintain relatively normal lives by managing to control space. This could be paralleled with the human capacity to adapt and innovate in response to changing circumstances. As AI and automation reshape the labor market, new jobs and industries may emerge and education and retraining could provide pathways to these new opportunities. So you have to learn how to adapt. You have to learn how to learn these things that I can say, as you see a new innovations, you can't be like, oh, that ain't for me. Or, you know, I'll leave that to the youngins. You, it doesn't matter what your age is. If you are going to survive in this new environment, you have to learn the new but, skills. But, and, and my, where I've come to the conclusion is that there's going to be far less of us that do that than don't. Green, because you know what? Unfortunately, and I see it already, and, and I experience it on, on, on myself. Mental health gets in the way of a lot of this. Yep. The imposter syndrome stops you. The anxiety yep. stops you. Um, your pride stops you. You don't want to suck at something new. You don't want to be a beginner in your elder years at something and ask a young cat to show you how to do something when you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s. But we have to get past that part to be like, all right, things have changed. Let me start over. You know, let me start from kindergarten with AI so I can survive, you know? What I try to leave people with is this, right? Because I get a lot of fear from the AI takeover. I get a lot of fear. I My primary audience is on average 38 to 45 years old. I get a lot. And one, I encourage people to understand this fundamentally. Again, no one has your vision your voice, your heartbeat, your drive, your passion. No one can touch on things and no one has your your journey, your feet print. This makes you a one of one. That's fundamental to understand as a human being. You don't just have an IQ, you have EQ. You don't just have intellectual property, you have emotional property. You have a story, you have a journey, you have experience that separates you that is your differentiator. That's number one. Tap into that part. Number two, a lot of times we say more money, more problems. I say more problems, more money. There were more millionaires made in the Great Depression than any other time in American history. So one of the things about us as people of color, people of poverty, regardless of what color you are, we are the most experienced in the areas of resolution when it comes to problems of innovation with the least amount, which means we are actually better built to be entrepreneurs. You talk to any venture capitalist, he is going to want the person who can do the most with the least amount. He's going to want a person who innovates and thinks outside of the box for problem solving. He's not going to just want the antiquated cut and paste guy. So if you know that you are uniquely built and designed to handle problems, it is high time you look around, start unearthing these problems and provide solutions. That is our advantage. If we stop thinking that that is what actually keeps us down, our lack of this and our lack of that, people are gonna have lack right now. You are a master of lack right mm -hmm. now. You can teach people how to move in lack. You can teach, you know what I'm saying? People who have lost their homes for the first time ever, who've never been on the system, who've never navigated the system. You can be a tour guide. You can actually help them to understand how to move in this new terrain. That is right there. Like for me, this is you right now. This, this really is the best opportunity because if you're poor, you can't sell opulence in a time of opulence. You don't speak opulence. But right now you speak solutions. And that's the part that I try to empower people with is to say, I know how it feels. But when you look around and you say, OK, actually, I got this. Actually, it's the I really got this. I know I speak this. And you're resilient, right? You're resilient right now. We can actually do the most. Now, you may not know AI. You better tap in with your grandbaby. 
You better get your call TT. TT, what's this chat GT? Grandma needs to know this. Mama needs to come over here and explain this. Now plug it in for me. Now, this is what I want. Okay? You better get that plug grandbaby on the phone. You better get that little niece or whoever on the phone. You ain't got to learn it. You better tap in with the grandbabies. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Tap in with the, with the youth. And that's how you can actually overcome and even maybe wind up thriving in this new environment. But this is nothing. If our ancestors, whether they were brought here, came here, whether you are first generation, they came to an opportunity with far less than we have in our arsenal. And I'd be damned if you tell me I can't make it. They didn't know the language. They didn't speak the language. They didn't have the resources. They didn't have a support group. They didn't have the advantage. How we not? How? 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 Make it make sense. Make it make sense. <clears throat> And the last time we as oppressed and underserved and under-resourced people got our hands on enabling technology, we made hip hop. If you That's a fact. See, I, I like this Abram here. That's I don't know who you, why you didn't. If, I like this. Abram, you all right with me. I don't know. Happy anniversary, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yep, Tap and keep fact. you up there to itself. That's what you nah, do. Nah, no, nah, facts, facts. The resources. And hip hop has become the language of the world the world over it literally you got putin over here blaming hip hop putin, putin over here blaming hip hop right this is uh, the hip hop is right but you are it's the voice of the underserved and like you said we took beats wait a minute <laughs> the lunch table right took that and next thing you know just in the halls you see what I'm saying? With nothing before we even had drum beats. We had that heartbeat before we had that. So that's the part that I like to encourage people to say. And now there is no, as the great light skin philosopher Drake said, what a time. <laughs> you and yours versus me and mine. You see what I'm saying? Are we talking teams? Because at the end of the day, we really have no barriers to entry. 25 years ago, you couldn't open up an e-commerce and just have Visa and MasterCard. Shopify, you can set up shop today. We have everything at our fingertips. There's no barrier to entry. You can set up anything that you need. You have every, you have templates. You don't even have, I remember having to learn HTML. I'm dating myself here. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to know coding. You don't have to learn anything. All you got to do is literally create a solution of value for someone. Get with these kids. If you don't know how, get these kids to put it together for you and offer it. Because you got the wisdom and you got the foresight. That's what we do have. We have the experience. So you have these type of channels that are trying to keep you aware. And what I do is I try to keep it in very simplistic form for people to just like, this is how it's going to affect us now, y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is what's coming. And this is how it pertains to you. Because I know it can get overwhelming. And, you know, it can it, it can you can really get afraid. You know what I mean? And so I try not yeah. to ever overwhelm them without providing some sort of a solution or perspective. So I thank you for keeping people at the forefront of this because it's so easy to not do. You could really run the views up, you know what I mean, by, by doing something counter to what you're doing. So I appreciate you guys for even one staying abreast deciding to use your voice for this, deciding to use your time and your platform. I thank you for seeing people like me and actually seeing my efforts and saying, you know what, let's lend a voice here, right? I'm not the most tech savvy person, you know? So I'm really that person. It's like, I'm right in between that, you guys. I'm, I'm trying to stay afoot too and keep you guys afoot. So, you know, without people like yourself that's going to bring that to the everyday folks, we will be lost. So don't think this is in vain. Don't think that what you're doing, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. who's listening? You know, are they going to apply it? I don't even consider. I just let it land. Right. And then you look up a year from now, somebody DMing you saying, yo, I, I heard that the podcast you had and you dropped that thing and I looked into it and it happens to me daily. You know what I mean? From two years ago, some, a seed that I dropped. So for that, I also want to salute you guys because I think it's remarkable. This is a very, uh, as they say, high level conversation. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Um, we definitely covered a lot, um, but we 
have a lot more to cover. We're going, we're doing a series. Um, so we're going to be talking to more people. Akinundrum, you're welcome to come back at any time. I'm going to let you know every time we're taping, like, hey, if you're not busy, come through. We're here. Um, so we really appreciate you um, being on the pulse as well. And um, we're going to keep putting it out there, keep letting people know what's going on um, and trying to get them in the fold as much as possible. Uh, and we definitely appreciate your time and being involved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I got to follow you. DM me. Ava. Yes. And I got that. Oh, the Google Doc. Hold on. Let me grab this. I'm going I'm to I'm connect y'all on the text. Oh, please. Yeah. Please. Sent it. He said, "I went over there and did a whole paper on the chat. Did y'all see how the man that came back with a whole paper? If y'all, you know, yeah, what? nah, he's see the that? man. He's the man. That's why I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying and, to. But it's even having the thought to do that, right? You know what I mean, right? Like some people, I'm in a moment. You know how you have some people that know to pull out the camera. They mm -hmm. just inherently know to capture that. He inherently knew, like, boom, let me go right here." And see what that does with that. I think that's that's just I cannot wait to post this clip and then just make that available so people can see in real time that use. That was fly. Right. That that was fly. That got me. No, nah, that was it. Watch that when they it. read it. When they read it, they're gonna get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The connection. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna and be if you back. Like I said, if you haven't, I posted it. I'll try to pin it. So if you haven't watched that Utopia. Yes. Is there um, yes. one video that's super fly because it shows the real guy and the, the history of it? The one I showed was the little cartoon. So people yeah, I saw laugh. the I saw the cartoon. One. It yeah, was, it was good. It, it made it, it told the story it needed to tell. It was dope. It did, and 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 to see that, and even the a uh, useless class cartoon version yep. of it, you know, mm -hmm. to try to make them really see that. And after a while, <laughs> they say life is stranger than fiction, right? You know, after a while we keep seeing this we keep seeing it and it's like okay this is real this this is this and i think that that's part of the dumbing down process when you can um place it in a fictional state your mind is saying movie 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 right and so when we see our lives through these screens they don't feel real Mm -hmm. And I tell people that, you know how they have that meme that shows like 1985, somebody getting beat, you dial a 911, 2025, you got your camera. Because when you look through a screen, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real. And that's why they can watch horrendous, you know, horrendous crimes being committed. Yeah. A screen. And so if you think about everything that's being brought to us through a screen, it doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what they've done to detach us so that we reject it when we see it. And then when it hits us and we walk into a serverless store, what? Right? Mm -hmm. You, you get late. jarred. And yeah. you're like, you haven't seen this in everything. And you're like, yeah, but I didn't. Yeah, because you thought fictional. And that's a way to put you into that passive state. And they don't and want you to fight it. it. Right. You feel like and then I've always said the ultimate seller, past, present and future in humanity is convenience. When I ask people all the time, do you value your safety over convenience? Yes. Do you value your privacy over convenience? Yes. Do you use Uber? Yes. You lie. Do you have Alexa? Yes. You lie. You see what I'm saying? And then they're like, whoa, your brain, the human brain, biologically speaking, how we're here to survive is to travel the path of least resistance, burn the least amount of calories. This is hardwired into you. So anything that's going to shortcut you, you're going to go for for self-preservation. Unfortunately, even at your own demise at times, you know what I'm saying? If it's convenient and that's what's happening now, what will be the nail in our coffin is convenience. You get what I'm saying? Because it's, it's more convenient. It's more convenient. It's more convenient. They systematically frustrated you with that line with a million people with 80 cashiers that are empty. Self checkout. Look at if we're not. You see what I'm saying? Didn't you see? Didn't you see the bait and switch? How they did you? Yep. Next thing you know, boom. Now it's all self checkout. You see what I'm saying? And this yep. is that's why I'm saying it's all deliberate. So when people think like, no, no, oh, buddy, come on, look at Nixon, look at the crack era, look at the prison industrial complex. We can look back now. Now we can see it like, oh, buddy, wait a minute. Right, you know what I mean? Right. 
ask people today, today, what are you going to say in 10 years and be looking back like, oh my God, you see what I'm saying? That was all the plan. We're living in it now. Yep. And it's not to fear monger you. It's to say, we got a lot of history we can learn from. Pay attention. We can learn. They already, yo, they use the same place. That's the one thing about them. They're consistent. You see what I'm saying? It's right. the same place. When they dropped that PPP play and I was like, right, who, what? Like, who's, who's running for that? Are you serious? And, you know, so it's, it's one of those, like, we got to learn. And um, I'm rooting for us as always. I'm rooting for us as always. I'm going to always do my part to help, you know, in any way that I can. And um, I believe fundamentally that, that greatness will arise out of this. Because those of us who do make it out of this, Oh, you dealing with a real one. You dealing mm -hmm. with the proper form of the Pokemon in. You know what I'm saying? You 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 got the real We're one evolved. in. Yeah, we have evolved. You know what I'm saying? We we have made it. You live through the crack era and this? Oh, buddy, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. That's a All fact. All right. You guys That's have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank appreciate you. you Definitely okay. love you. Appreciate you. Make sure y'all follow her, please. At Conundrum on Instagram. Uh, I don't know. Are you on Twitter or any other platform? What's, what's... Not really. Not really. Lazy. Just nah. um, I'm on lazy Facebook. Focus. Not lazy. Of... <laughs> I'm on Facebook by virtue of just like uh, the reshare thing, but right. I'm not technically. Right, there, right. But I actually have a page gotcha. over there. Yeah. Right. But everything that I do is aconundrum.com. I just put it there. Anything that I do is there. There it is. Aconundrum.com. Go make sure you follow pay attention make ask questions go in the comments she responds not a problem don't be rude don't be an asshole because she's here to help you yeah. please and, I, and let me tell you something they always say don't shoot the messenger this messenger shoots back okay. <laughs> there, it is. there it is there it is <laughs> all right all right nice appreciate you guys. See you next time for sure. Abron, uh, follow him, Abron, at, at, at Abron underscore AI and just Abron on Twitter. And also follow me, TatWizza, T-A-T-W-Z, on everything. Um, we will be back with more information. See you soon.